Hi everyone, welcome. Welcome to Woolen Spinning. Welcome to this place. Uh, it is Saturday, June 12th of 2021 and I just want to welcome you. Uh, my name is Rachel. I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls and uh, this is Woolen Spinning. We come to this place to talk about spinning, to talk about making yarn and then we talk about using our yarn which is fantastic. I want to welcome everybody in the live chat, uh, those who have access to the live streams each week uh, to participate, to contribute, to uh, inspire, motivate, um, share, uh, are part of our Patreon community. So thank you so much to you guys for your ongoing support of the show and of this vibrant community. It is just uh, an, an amazing uh, group of people. And uh, if you are first, if this is your first time checking out the show, you've never kind of been here before, you're not really sure what we do, this is what we do, so welcome. And for those who are returning viewers, thank you so much for continuing to watch the show week in, week out. And if you wouldn't mind taking a moment to hit the like button and the subscribe button, I would really appreciate that. It's a small way that you can help me out. We are sort of in the midst of a kind of a busy morning. Um, I was presenting this morning for the Ontario hand spinning seminar. So that was really fun. And I did my Q and A this morning uh, with them and they've emailed me a, a list of questions, which is wonderful for me to be able to follow up with them. Uh, because it's just like a small period of question time before they go on to the next presenter, which is really cool. So um, yeah, kind of a neat, neat morning. And uh, thank you to OHS for inviting me in for uh, doing that. So OHS is the Ontario Hand Weavers and Spinner and sorry, Hand Spinners and Weavers um, Association. So how are you guys? The chat is going crazy. Thank you so much for those who uh, to Diane and um, um, everybody else. <laughs> I know Diane said um, happy birthday to Mike. Um, he's celebrating quite a big birthday today, so thank you so much. We're going to have a um, family dinner this evening, so the four of us and my mom is going to come because she's in our household, and that'll be really nice to spend that time together and to celebrate him. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I just uh, want to welcome everybody. I'm just looking at who's in the chat, actually, so I'm a little bit distracted. We've got Pat and Kelly, Zan. Martha, Michelle, Mary, hello, Michelle, uh, Kathy, um, Zan, San, um, Laura, Diane, Donna, Hannah, Greta Lynn, Eve, Becca, Dana, Kimberly, Linda, ooh, I'm glad you're here, Linda, you'll see why later, uh, Dorothy, Sarah, Erica, our other Dana, uh, Leah, and Amanda, good to see you. It was really nice to meet you yesterday, Amanda, in our book club. Um, Kaylee, Dagmar, Glenda, good to see you guys. Alberto, Tracy, good to see you guys. Christine, thank you so much for being here this morning, you guys. Becca just said she's just tying up her last uh, Castle Milk Moret skein, finally, and what are, what's everybody else up to? Um, so I have been waiting to share this with you guys all week. On Wednesday into Thursday, uh, so that night, so Wednesday night, Thursday morning, um, I was having kind of um, a disrupted sleep. It did. I wasn't having a really super settled sleep. And at about, I probably woke up around like 3, 3.30. And do you guys want to know why I woke up? Just just guess. Like why, why I woke up from a dream. And the dream was very vivid. So it was the... Um, it was the weirdest dream ever. So Becca years ago, not years ago, actually, it was after my dad died. She had sent me a, a little Ziploc, uh, a Ziploc bag of some Castle Milk Moret. And the staples are so short and so small that I've been saving it because I wanted to include the staples in the School of Sweet Georgia Sheep Breeds workshop. And so now that the workshop is done and it's filmed and it's photographed, I can spin it. So that's why I've been saving it for the last two years and not quite two years. And um, I was dreaming vividly <laughs> about spinning the Castle Milk Moret and putting it on my drum carter and carting it up and getting it ready to spin. And like I was having this like vivid dream. <laughs> it was so weird. So I guess that's my next spinning project. 
Um, thank you for the happy birthdays to Mike. Um, I really appreciate it, you guys. I'm not sure, for those of you who are new to the community and who are sort of just getting your feet wet and are kind of getting into the woolen spinning community, uh, Mike doesn't really make any appearances anywhere. I think there's like one or maybe two times that he makes an appearance somewhere. Um, but he is our tech support. He does everything behind the scenes. So he makes sure that the podcast is available on iTunes. He makes sure that everything is smooth. He makes sure everything's running. If I'm having major technical problems that I can't navigate, he's the one that fixes it all. Um, he helps with some of the photography. He helps with some of the shots. Um, he helps with a little bit of the editing once in a while, or like he'll give me his feedback. He'll help me. And he also is the reason for, um, or like not the reason, but he also um, helps me with a lot of the behind the scenes stuff because you know, I'm only one person. Um, he, you know, the things like cleaning the house and making sure the bathrooms are presentable. And um, if I need him to do some extra grocery shopping, if I've forgotten stuff on the list or um, meal prep, he did the breakfast this morning for the kids. So he does a lot of the like running of the house stuff and we're definitely a true partnership. So um, I couldn't do any of this without him. There is no way, no way. So thank you. He did build my desk. You're right, Diane. He built the desk. Um, yeah, yeah, way, Becca. Yeah, she says no way, but yes, absolutely. It is a birthday weekend. Thank you, uh, thank you, Dorothy. Um, <laughs> that's funny, Charlotte. Rachel's reading of names delights the same as hearing Miss Nancy on Roper Room. <laughs> um, so watching from Toronto this morning, I'm, it's supposed to be rainy, cloudy today, but so far sunny from my balcony cat in my lap. That sounds amazing, Hannah. Where in Toronto are you? Of course, Mike is from Toronto and of course our family is all in Ontario. Um, <laughs> I vote for Mr. Welford cameo appearance. Yeah, Eve, if I could just get him to do that. I asked him if he would come on so that you guys could wish him a happy birthday, but he said no. So on today's show, I actually finished my spindle spin finally. Um, the Florence tank is done-ish. It's not done, done, done. Um, it's not been photographed and I have to weave in the ends, but I thought I would just mention it. And then we're gonna get on the wheel. Um, based on your votes, we're going to start spinning through the spinning sheep breeds um, set. So we'll see kind of where that takes us and at what time we're at once we do that stuff. And um, I've got quite a bit of... Um, um, community participation. You guys have been so prolific lately. It has been phenomenal. I know you guys want a cameo appearance. He's, he, he's, uh, he's upstairs. Um, I can text him and ask him. So, um, oh, hi Mars. Good to see you. Enjoy editing the podcast. Um, can't wait to see it. The, uh, for those who are sort of navigating the community and trying to find everything in the myriad of, of Patreon posts and all of the stuff that gets published, um, the Ketchup and Pickles post will be published on, I think I scheduled it for Tuesday because at that point everything will be active and all the links will be active. So Wool and Spinning Radio for this month was released and me and Katrina got together and chit chatted for that one. And then we've got uh, Spinning the Last of the Breed and Color Study on Spinning Pearls, Thoughtful Spinner and How I Spin for this month. So um, that's about this, my spark cardigan that I made for our Breed and Color Study this time around. This month is kind of a wrap up of all of the Breed and Color Study. And then next month in July, we're kind of back into our luxury fibers. So we're looking at the camelids through into the fall. So I look forward to exploring all of that with you guys over the coming days, weeks, and months. So I will see you on the other side. talked him into it. <laughs> so here's Mike. Come on down. Yeah. Hello. So you guys can wish him a happy birthday. <laughs> and I'm looking at the other camera. And um, yet yeah, this is our tech support, oh. i.e. our birthday boy. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> totally embarrassed him. Um, 
so happy birthday they say mike happy birthday happy birthday um the sheep breeds kit thank you you guys oh now chat's going crazy <laughs> You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Um, the Sheep Breeds Kit, while you guys are wishing him a happy birthday, um, the Sheep Breeds Kit, Dana, is from the School of Sweet Georgia. So um, it's part of the, the workshop. You don't have to participate in the School of Sweet Georgia to purchase one of these. Um, this is the first two. So this is the spinning sheep breeds for the fine wools. Um, so this one has fin, which is this gorgeous gray. Thank you, you guys, for such beautiful uh, birthday wishes. It's very kind. Um, he was very embarrassed. You guys managed to make him very pink. Um, this is Merino. And then we've got Ramboulet. So uh, this is this is the Rambo. So we've got um, Comb Top. And um, we've, if you guys can see, maybe you can see this on the camera, the Ramboulet, which is in this hand, it's a little bit creamier than the um, Merino. So the Merino is very, very, very white. Um, and the Rambo, it's hard to see under the light, but maybe you can see there's a slight difference in the color of the wool. The Rambo is a little tiny bit more ivory, whereas the Merino is very, very, very white. So um, those are the first three. And then um, as we go along throughout the summer, we'll be delving into and getting onto the wheel and spinning some of the other stuff. So I think what we'll do today is we'll get kind of the elephant in the room done and we'll spin up the merino first um, we'll get that onto the wheel first and we'll talk about sampling that and we'll do that today and then um, we will move to the other the next one the next show and then the next one the next show and sort of by the end of the summer maybe we'll have all of them spun up and ready to go so you do love embarrassing people it's true eve thank you so much you guys happy birthday couldn't do this without you happy birthday thank you you guys um, it's just so, so generous and kind. Now I thought that I would talk really quickly about my Florence tank. So I'm just going to pivot my camera a little bit and I'm going to move a little bit. And, um, this is done. It's not done, done, done. Um, I finished it last night. Um, I am moderately kind of accepting of it. <laughs> Um, I'm not overly happy with it. I'll be, I, I, I have to be honest with you guys and kind of tell you, um, I made the, the gauge that I was working with in the yarn that I chose was a little bit different from the pattern and just overall in the overall feel of the, of, of the whole thing. Um, I haven't washed and blocked it yet. So it's kind of washed and blocked from here down. Um, this is the part that hasn't been washed and blocked yet. And I haven't woven in the ends. So when I turn Diane, Diana around, if I don't hit my wheel, um, all of the ends are still poking out and, um, I still need to kind of fix her up. Um, but I'm not, I'm not super, super, super happy with this. I, I don't, I don't love how it turned out. I have to fix the back collar. I'm going to have to re-knit it and rip it out. The theme with this sweater has been rip and re-knit. Um, so I have ripped and re-knit this thing so many times. Um, and it's just kind of at the point where I'm just kind of done with it. The yarn that I chose was Drops. It was a lace weight um, mulberry silk alpaca blend. It's a beautiful yarn. The pattern, you hold it double. As I was knitting, I was kind of realizing that the pattern actually calls for slightly heavier weight yarn. So this is like a little bit too fine for the pattern. And this is how I have so much yarn left over, you guys. It's not even funny. These are basically complete skeins um, or balls. I used maybe 10 yards off of each of them. So I, I could have done this in two balls because I still have the other four, sorry, the other two. Um, I still have a whole bunch of yardage on those as well. Um, so I could have done this in only two balls of yarn. Um, so th that's kind of unfortunate just because now I have stash. Um, and the whole idea is to de-stash. Um, but I got buttons onto her last night. Um, and I, I actually quite like the aesthetic of the front of the sweater. I added an extra buttonhole up here because even though the V-neck decreases have already started, I really like that look of a Henley that's kind of the one button is left undone. I just like the, the look of that. Um, but that said, um, the, the decreases actually start down here. So it's kind of in the wrong spot. Um, just the way that the buttonholes worked out. And if I had been smarter about it, I would have continued knitting the body until I actually got to that last buttonhole and then started the V-neck. But 
again, this is kind of one of those sweaters where it's just like one thing after another. Do you know what I mean? Um, it obviously fits quite nicely. I did try it on last night over a, um, just a bra, um, and it looks quite lovely. It needs some sort of a camisole underneath, um, but you'll see at the back, this is the part that I'm really kind of a bit bummed about. The back is not kind of what I had hoped that it would be. So if I just turn her, what's the best way for me to turn her? I'm just going to move her back here. Um, so this is the back and the bottom looks great, like up to about here, but this up here, this all just, it, you can't see cause it's not super, super close, but it just looks messy. Um, it doesn't look really nicely seamed and it doesn't look really nicely finished and really nicely done. I didn't have to modify this a whole bunch. I was able to get it on the first try, but I did a three needle bind off instead of grafting. And I think that I need to go back and actually kitchener it. And then this down here, it, you know, part of me is like, well, maybe it'll block out. And the other part of me is like, may, I don't think it will. And then this ended up being quite razor back, which is racer back, which is not really what I wanted. I kind of wanted it more straight up. So I just, to be honest with you, I am just so done with this. Um, there's part of me that just kind of wants to like give it to somebody and they can, they can deal with it. And I'm just kind of done with it. Um, I'm not sure how much I'll wear this anyways. Um, cause it's very, very low at the front. Even if you were to put, um, a, t a, a sort of a, to close it there. Like if I close it here, I'll show you, it lifts it up a bit too much. Actually, that's not bad. That's actually not bad. So anyhow, it's, it's not great. Um, the whole thing, I just love this pattern so much, but just not being able to get this back part to work and all of this up here last night was kind of like the icing on the cake. Um, and it's not because I'm not able and not because I'm not capable. I, I think I'm just kind of burned out with it, but I feel like if I stop working on it, I'm going to forget what I did and, um, I'm not going to remember enough to be able to kind of finish it and, and, and sort of you know, see it through kind of thing. And it probably will only take like an hour of finishing, um, at, to, to just sit at the table rather than trying to do it like on my lap or on the bed or something. Um, and just kind of see it through and, and, and finish it. But you know, when you're just kind of feeling saturated with something and you're just kind of done. So, um, yeah, I've got yarn pulling here. Oh, yeah, I have to, there's a couple of things I have to fix. So anyway, that's the Florence tank. It's by Sorry Nordland. Um, it's a beautiful pattern. The reason why I keep being drawn to her patterns is because I just love them so much. They're well written. They're clear. They're just beautifully done. They're beautifully photographed. I really like that she models her own stuff. And so you can see it on a real body. Um, I really like it when designers do that. And, um, sorry, is just a beautiful woman. And, um, I'm really drawn to her aesthetic and I'm drawn to her patterns, which is why I wanted to make that in the first place. But now I'm kind of like, okay, I'm kind of saturated and the finishing stuff, it just feels very fiddly and I want it to look really nice and I want it to be done well. So when it doesn't look really super, um, polished, then I feel kind of disappointed about it. So that's kind of that. Um, yeah. So in this, in this, sort of sense, um, you know, it, it's, it's done, but it, it's, it's lacking. Yeah. So, um, if I were to make this again, and for those who, um, are, um, thinking about making this definitely choose a fingering weight yarn to hold double. Um, when the, the pattern stitch, um, and the, the gauge and whatnot would work better. Um, and I think I, when I was looking at the pattern, when I was choosing yarn and whatnot, I think I went too fine and a holding a fingering weight double would work a lot better. Cause the other thing is you want coverage where the lace is modest enough and not pulling so much that you can see through it, that you can just wear it. Like it's meant to be a top, like it's meant to be a tank to stand on its own with just an undergarment, um, not to have another shirt underneath. So maybe that'll help. Cause I know there are a few of you here that are thinking about making it. I recently ripped out the shawl I was doing. I was telling Eve that I did a Rachel. <laughs> yeah, just rip out all the things, right, Samantha? 
Uh, when you have been in the weeds with a project, moderately accepting is a pretty good place for me. It might change later. The making experience colors the whole project's feelings of often. It's so true, Becca. And this is one of those situations where I'm just kind of like, is it done yet? And I think part of me too is I'm excited to go on to some other projects. Like I'm just ready to move on. Um, I haven't had a really super strong making mojo this year. And I think it's just general fatigue and tiredness, trying to figure out what we're doing with the kids for school, all those things. And um, um, I'm starting to kind of get a little bit of a mojo and wanting to make some, some new things. And having a couple of projects back to back that were kind of like, mm, it's okay. Um, I'm looking forward to having something that I'm excited about. So maybe take a break from it and come back. I just finished a sari sweater and love it. Oh, that's wonderful, Carol. Um, it's a really beautiful top. It's a shame you've had so many frustrations with it. Thanks, Sarah. I think part of it is because I modified it um, because of my gauge. And if I just knit to pattern, it would have been fine. And the funny thing is actually, one of the things uh, that I was thinking last night as I was finishing up the back for the second time, I know the lace pattern, like the back of my hand now, like I really understand how the lace pattern actually works now. And that has been really good because looking at where the yarn overs fall and where the uh, decreases fall, I really understand the mechanics of it because you're working um, lace on both sides, front, right side and wrong side. So that's actually been really a really good learning experience because I'm, I'm good at lace, but it's nice to, um, it's nice to really feel like you understand it. I don't think, yeah, great question, Diane. Do you think the racer back is because of the armhole being in a weird place in the first draft? No, I don't think so, Diane. Um, great question. I think it's because of the way that the armhole decreases are done. Um, they're a little bit too severe for my size. So I went back and I didn't do them on the second time round. But if I were to do it again, I wouldn't even do them on the front either. And then that would kind of bring it all back together. So part of it is just there's not enough fabric in here. Um, and it just kind of ended up working a, a little bit differently. Uh, while I'm answering questions, let's talk about this little spindle spin. So we are doing spindle spun summer and that is starting on June 20. Can you guys help me? What's the solstice? June 22nd. I think it's the kids last day of school. Um, so I've been clearing off my spindles. I'm not going to participate like formally. I'm going to just work on my own stuff and kind of start spinning some stuff. So I've got uh, four ounces of a Hello Yarn uh, braid that I've been kind of saving and I'm going to work on that. I also have my birthday spin from Katrina from last year that I've been working on. So I took that to the park the other day, which was really fun. And then I got this plied and washed and finished. So this is Superwash Merino. It's from 2017 Fiber Club from Sweet Georgia. It was called Character Study. They have a colorway, I think it's called Sugar Shack, that's very, very, very similar to this, except that Sugar Shack has white in it as well. So if you like these colors, this is still available in, in a slightly different form. Um, and this is about 50 grams because the other half was used for that gorgeous um, coil yarn that I spun for the club. So that is done. Um, I applied that on my Steampunk, and it was just a really straightforward, really, really, really easy um, ply and spin and I got that done the other day and uh, I will put this in my stash my plan is actually to do something for Nora but my friend Jenny who I'm not sure if she's here today because she's doing the Ontario hand spinning seminar today um, she her daughter Genevieve sent Nora some uh, yarn that she had dyed and so her and Genevieve Nora and Genevieve are going to make something together and then they also popped a skein in for James which was lovely it's this gorgeous bright green and um, I told, I promised James that I would knit him something as well. So um, Nora's going to work on her yarn and then I'm going to work on the other for James. I asked him if he wanted to knit his own thing, but he said, he said not right now. So we'll figure that out. I encourage you to continue. Thank you, Dana. Um, I, I like the racer back, but if it's not what you wanted, I can understand you. It's not that it's some, yeah, that's a great, a great comment, Wendy. It's not that it's not what I wanted. It's not what I expected. So it's kind of like getting my head around, okay, but how would I wear this so that I can still wear a bra? Because <laughs> I, I don't know that I have anything that would work underneath. And it's quite sheer because of the light 
yarn. Like this is very fine gauge. So that's part of my like hang up. It's like, okay, what is this actually gonna look like? Like on me, so at, like to actually wear. So uh, it would be cool to use that lace pattern in a different type of sweater, like the detail of the fronts of a cardigan. I was thinking the same thing, Dana. And I have a, I've earmarked a, a pattern for my next knit. So my, my reward to finishing this is to cast something new on. And I'm thinking that I'm going to make Enchanté by Emily Louise. Um, and I just linked it in the live chat for you guys. And it's got this gorgeous kind of um, uh, vine-like le leaves and vine pattern going up the front. I know, I'm a sucker for lace. It's just terrible. But I have some yarn that would actually fit the gauge just absolutely perfectly. And uh, it's commercial yarn. And that's going to be my reward is to cast that on when I'm finished this this uh, behemoth. For such a small sweater, it is quite the behemoth. I was wondering about a sports bra, Kelly. Um, and actually, I have to admit, this the amount of work that's gone into this, it would be worth it to get a gray sports bra to go underneath that would kind of cover all the lines that I need covered to be able to wear it. So, yeah. Are either kids interested in crafting? Great question, Eve. Um, Nora is. Um, she's more of like my, my crafter. Like she likes the rainbow loom. She likes to knit. She likes to play around with my spindles. She likes to make things. Uh, they both like to make things. James is my artist. Um, he likes to draw design. He makes books. Um, he illustrates them. He writes stories. Uh, he likes to paint. Uh, his paintings are quite, quite, um, quite well done. This is actually one of his most recent paintings. It's a, uh, pear. Um, but I haven't put it up yet. So, um, it's going to go up there. I just haven't put it up yet. So just a little bit, um, he, he's sort of more of my, my artist rather than wanting to kind of craft, but then you give them a couple of like boxes, um, like Amazon boxes and they're creating all these, like building all these things. So I wouldn't say he's not a, he's a maker, but he's not necessarily like a crafter and he liked the rainbow loom. He likes doing it. Um, but he has to be in kind of a quiet headspace and where I'm sitting with him and we're at the table together and it's more about the time together versus um him um actually making making the the bracelets yeah yeah it is a pretty it is a pretty uh sweater um I'm a sucker for lace too says Dana that's probably why you're telling me to uh stick with it the problem with the camisole Dorothy is that it'll come down at the back outside of where the racer is so that's the problem do you think commercial yarn is helping keep you motivated this year? Um, yes and no. That's a great question, Kaylee. I hadn't thought about that. I, it's not so much, um, I'm trying to knit down my stash. So I have quite a few sweater quantities of yarn and I have them earmarked for specific projects. And um, because I'm doing so much sampling currently for other things that we're working on spinning wise. And I've got some big spins that I'm trying to get through, like my breed study with the Long Way Homestead, um, where I want all of those yarns before I do anything with them. Um, I think that's kind of keeping me um, focused on the spinning side. So then it kind of frees me up to knit from my stash for the other stuff, if that makes sense. Um, there's a couple of sweaters that I would, that I, I have yarn earmarked for. Um, that I'm excited to kind of get to, if that makes sense. Yeah. James might want to do some background art. Yeah, totally, Eve. That's why I, I want to hang up the, the picture of his pair. So let's uh, pivot. Um, yeah, whenever the um, the uh, summer solstice is um, for the Spindle Spun Summer, SSS, um, I wrote it in our Ravelry group, and it's on the Slack channel. If you're on the Slack channel, look for the channel hashtag spindle spun summer all one word um, and that is the uh, threat the channel on slack and then the spindle spun summer is starting Sunday June 20th thank you Christine um, and that is the um, summer solstice so that's when we're starting um, all right so the merino so this is part of the spinning sheep breeds kit so what, what I'm all I'm doing I'm sort of sitting here doing it without actually telling you I'm doing it I'm just unbraiding the uh, sample so this is two ounces about 57 grams 
of merino so this is one of the one of the breeds that you get to spin um, when you get the kit from this from sweet georgia um, for the breed study for the for the um, spinning sheep breeds workshop and what I do with these and maybe it's better if I go under the product camera so let me just change things a little bit so that you can see um, I saw somebody make a comment about the fin. Um, yeah, fin, finish wool, same thing. When, I think fin, because so many of us have worked with it so much, we just kind of automatically shorten it to fin. But when we say fin, we're talking about like finish, finish sheep, finish wool. Um, so what I do with something like this, I've got two ounces of this. So I can do a couple of things. I can take, this is what I used to do all the time. I would t find the two ends. So these are the two ends. And I would go all the way down all the way down so picture this as being four ounces and i would break it here and that would give me one bobbin uh for each um fiber so that would give me bobbin one and bobbin two uh and i used to do that for pretty much everything because i just found it was a really great way to kind of break up the spinning some way somehow uh, I'm not going to do that with this because I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to spin this um the other thing that you can do is sort of as you open up the top and as you sort of pull, tease it apart without messing up the prep, that's the key, right? We don't want to mess up the prep. You can sort of find these places, these natural breaks in the fiber where you can sort of just very gently tease it apart. And this is what some people do where they'll strip the whole length and they'll try to get it sort of somewhat in the middle. And um, we talk about this on the workshop, actually. where as you're stripping, you don't want to just rip it apart. You want to just very gently go all the way, all the way to the end um, and try to preserve the top because the more that you um, manipulate it and the more that you play with it, unfortunately, the more it's going to start to fall apart and you're going to lose that beautiful prep. So um, then you're going to go, I, what I, I'm going to look for another break and I'm going to pull that all the way down. This is going to be really fun um, to dye, I think. So, you know, if, if, we, if I sort of spin a skein of this and then um, what I was thinking was breaking it up into seven or eight mini skeins afterwards and then dyeing the rainbow um, and then doing that with all of them when they're all done. And then I would have um, one that was left the natural color and then I would have kind of a triangle, if you will, of all of the other colors, the primaries and the secondaries. Um, and sort of, you know, do that with all of them. Um, I thought that would be really fun. So I've got this sort of stripped down, ready to go here and I can keep stripping this. Like I probably would take this and, and do it, go one more time all the way down, all the way along. Um, and then, so that gives me sort of from this hat, from this quarter, cause I've still got this big one back here. Um, I would sort of have three lengths of fiber to work with. And then from there, you can load it onto a distaff if you would like to, to manage your spinning. You can pre-draft it all the way down and pre-attenuate all the way down. Um, so what you can do to pre-attenuate is just very gently pre-draft it like this. If you want to, you don't have to. Um, I like doing that just because I really like a lot of air in my yarns and a lot of lightness and a lot of... Um, loft and then I tend to sort of up ply a little bit and ply a little bit more firmly. Um, some people would say, yeah, but then your yarns aren't balanced and you don't have a really perfectly balanced yarn, but I've never had a problem in my knitting um, with that. I think you would really have to push it to an extreme. Um, it used to be, that's a great question, Diane. Do you pay attention to which end you're spinning, like balling them up from the same end as they wait to be spun. So if I pre-attenuate, I ball up from the end that I finished with so that I can start at the end that I started pre-drafting from. Um, so if I go ahead and do this one as well, I'm gonna start at this end with the pre-drafting. And I, I usually add a little bit of a twist to hold it all together. My friend Kim McKenna actually taught me that. And um, you just kind of twist it a little bit so that you can add a little bit of a twist and it doesn't fall apart. And then you can go all the way along and then I ball it up from the end that I 
finish. So I finish at this end and then I can ball it up from that end. Now I wish I had a distaff right here because I would actually put it on a distaff um, and then I can start spinning from that end. It, when I remember when I first came to spinning um, that it really mattered which end of the comb top you started at. And if you were having a lot of troubles drafting, people would say flip it to the other end because you're probably spinning from the um, like the wrong end of the comb top. But I'm finding increasingly with these commercial comb tops, it's just not a problem. Yeah, uh, great question, Sarah. Does Finn vary a lot? I've had, I've just had a quick look on World of Wool and it has Finnish listed as a medium. So Finn is, um, it does vary a lot and it depends on where it comes from and it depends on how it was um, raised. In the Sheep Breeds Workshop, we have sort of um, gone with a micron count up to about 24 for our fine wools. And fin can vary from 22 to 33. And again, it really depends on how it is, um, how it is raised, how it, how it is um, prepped. Um, so fin kind of walks that line. So does um, Shetland. Um, it can walk the line between between a medium and a fine, and of course we've kind of classified it as a um, um, as a primitive. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other stuff. I hate it. Um, you know, Polworth is sort of walks that line sometimes. Um, what else? I'm trying to think of some of the other ones that walk that line. And in the spinning sheep breeds workshop, I I put medium and fine together. So we talk about mediums as an extension of fine wool spinning. So maybe that will help. Um, let's see if I have eight ounces of fin spilk. Oh, that would be great Eve to share that with, uh, with Sarah. Um, I only pay attention if it affects color management. Absolutely. Laura, especially nowadays, um, commercial top can't, can't keep butts and ends in the same strict direction anyway. So I only find I care what about the end of the top when it's been hand combed. Absolutely, Becca, yeah, totally, yeah. Um, that's uh, a great way of sort of summing that up. So let's get on the wheel and let's sample some of this. And I'm just gonna shift myself um, back a little bit so that I can still see you guys and talk to you. So I'm just gonna, there's gonna be a bit of a camera shake here for just a minute, so I am sorry about that, but I just need to be able to move my camera and you guys will see a little bit of it in the main view, but I hope that you don't mind about that. And I find that this helps you guys to be able to see. So if I start, like I said, I wish I had one of my disc staffs close by, but I just don't have one within um, arm's reach. It's over there um, in the living room. So I've set up my Lendrum um, as sort of a place to start. So I thought that we would talk about um, some of the ways that we see Merino spun when you look on like Instagram or if you look at like say Etsy and somebody's selling their hand spun. So one of the common ways that you see Merino spun is treadle, draft, treadle, draft, treadle, draft, treadle, treadle. So you see how my treadling is matching my fingers? Treadle, Treadle, I'm going really slow so you guys can see. Treadle, so I'm currently on 12 to one. We'll have a look at this plyback test in just a minute. And if you can see how light my backhand is holding, it's like not really holding the fibers. It's really just supporting them. Draft, 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 draft. And the nice thing about this is if you don't have really high ratios, um, you can get that high twist into Merino. Like if you only have eight to one, nine to one, um, you can get that extra twist in there by spinning this way because you know that each draft you're getting that many twists in. So nine twists into that length. It might not be an inch, it might be an inch and a half. This is quite long staple I'm actually kind of surprised. Um, it's really lovely to spin. This is really soft. Um, this is just beautiful. Draft, draft, 
draft. And if you want to thin it out, you just take fewer fibers. Don't go back into your fiber supply as far and you just keep going. So that is the short forward. So let's have a look at what that sample looks like. Normally I would use my orifice hook, but because I don't like it when it pops back on itself like that, uncontrolled. And a trick that I learned from my friend Kim is to knot the top so that you can hold that twist in there so it stays stable. So that is the short forward. So you can see, it's better to see it on my sleeve actually. You can see all those just lovely little pearl bumps on there. And it's just got, it's very even, very consistent, really lovely, so, very soft. This would be a great way to spin this. Um, is that the badger face on the wheel? It's not actually, I changed out the bobbin. Now we could go back and we could do a three ply ply back test. So what we're gonna do for a three ply is I'm gonna fold it back on itself. So I'm gonna fold it back and then I'm gonna fold it back one more time. And the neat thing about a three ply ply back test is if you wrap it from the orifice side, so you wanna wrap it from the orifice side and then very, very slowly add your twist in and unravel it. Cause you don't want it to just pop back on itself cause you're gonna have a big tangled mess. So this is the three ply. So that, that's quite lovely too. A little bit thicker, probably more of like a DK weight. That's really nice, actually. Nice twist angle. There we go. Nice twist angle, about 40, 40 degrees, maybe 45. Very even, worsted spun. That would be just a gorgeous sweater yarn. A little bit denser. Um, this is the two of them next to each other. So the bottom is the two ply next to my ring. Sorry. Yeah, the bottom is my two ply next to my ring and the top one is my three ply. You can see the difference. The, the three ply is much rounder. Um, it has more of like um, uh, a little bit more of a severe twist angle, even though it's the same amount of twist in the singles for both of these yarns. But um, the three ply is just a little bit rounder. It's bouncier, a little bit loftier. The two ply, a little bit more oval, um, not quite as severe a twist angle. Uh, definitely a finer gauge, more of a fingering weight. This is kind of more of like a 14 wraps per inch. This is probably more 18 wraps per inch. Can I actually have a look here. So the two ply is about, yeah, about 16 wraps per inch and the three ply is about 14 wraps per inch. So not quite DK, more of like a sport weight for the uh, three ply. Let me just look at the chat before we go on to a different way of spinning these so that I don't miss any questions. Um, I notice your legs seem extra semi extended when you treadle. Is there, oh, so um, is where is the ideal height for the orifice to hit your body while spinning? Great question, Vicki. Um, it's funny that you would ask that because I was gonna speak to that. When I demo on the show and when I'm set up on the wheel like this and I'm set up with it, with the, especially the Lendrum, my chair that I need to podcast is a little bit too high. So I would normally, when I'm spinning by myself and not on the show, um, I take the pillow off because I need to be lower. Um, so I kind of have to reach a little bit, um, but for the show, for the right height and stuff, I have to use a slightly higher chair. So the, my ergonomics aren't quite what I do in real life. So great question, Vicki. Um, can you talk about your apron? Basically, um, yes, no problem. I have talked about it before, Hannah, that's all good. This is made by uh, Katrina's mom, Judy. Um, you can contact Katrina, craftyjacks.ca, to talk to her about getting one. Um, she makes them custom. Um, thank you, Becca, for answering. I noticed that there seems to be lesser twist angle on the three ply. Um, I would say, you know what, when they're actually laying here in front of me, I don't know if you guys can see this. It's probably a bit too small. They're at, it's actually the same. Both of them are about 40 degrees. Yeah. Um, is that about two inch distance of draft? I would say about one and a half to one and three quarters inch. Let me see. 
because it's not quite too it's not it's definitely not an inch it's longer than that great question Charlotte let's have a look <clears throat> Yeah, it's about about an inch and a half. I don't have a measuring tape here. Uh, pockets are for fiber. And then this is um, more pockets. <laughs> Do a walkthrough of the apron. Uh, this is more pockets for stuff like oil, um, scissors. Um, you can put your sukaplaki, like your, your control card in there. Um, I don't use it when I'm teaching you guys because I find stuff gets in the way and I want it to be really clear what I'm doing. But when I'm spinning by myself, I do tend to use them. Um, okay, so let's draft, draft. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my default. I'm just gonna spin the way that I would spin this if I wasn't doing anything intentionally. So if I was just completely on autopilot, I have about four treadles one, two, three, four. So this is just totally default. I'm not doing anything special. I'm just totally going on autopilot. So I'm treadling about four treadles per um, drafting back and I was drafting back about the same distance each time. So that is my default spinning. If I'm not going to do anything to intentionally, I'm going to do everything on autopilot um, and I'm not going to pay any attention. I'm going to completely go into a moving meditation. That is how I spin four treadles. I draft back to about here and you can see that this yarn is quite different in the sense that it's way airier. It's lower twist, it's loftier, it's not as, it's not as, um, uh, this one is more worsted, this one's a little bit more, it's fuzzier, a little bit loftier, it's not quite so, um, it's, it's more elastic, but it's, it's not as sort of structurally strong, if you will. And then we'll have a look at the three ply. It's fun to look at our default because it's a way of sort of figuring out like where to start. You know, if I spin this default, what does that look like? You know, what, what, what does our default spinning look like? And then we can go from there. And it's not because our default is not the one it's, it's not wrong or because it's not the one that we're going to choose. It's just one way of, of approaching it and of spinning. And it, it gives you a lot of information. Okay, and then this is the three ply. See how see how airy that is, and how bouncy and lofty that is. It's almost better on my ring because then it can focus on my ring. So that's my default. And look at compared to the um, the three ply where I was doing the short forward. Um, it's not as consistent. It's it's definitely airier. The singles are fuzzier compared to the three ply. You can see the individual strands. Um, There's they're, they're the same wraps per inch, but this one is going to. Um, it's not going to be as sturdy. It's not going to be as stable. Um, it'll, it'll fuzz, it'll pill, whereas this one will wear a little bit better. So different, totally different yarns, different ways of spinning. And I'll take a picture of those four yarns for you and I will um, share them with you um, so that you can see them um, later today. I'll, I'll upload those photos for you. So that's a place to start with that merino. And honestly, I probably will spin it. I might actually spin it as a three ply, which is really unusual for me. But I might actually do a three ply just to kind of do some comparison work and kind of see that. I, w I want to spin all of the fibers in the kit all the same way, like all two ply, all three ply. Um, so I need to think about kind of what I want to do and what I want that to look like. I don't know yet, Dana, actually. Oh, I just moved myself. I'm not actually sure how we, how I'll spin it, um, Dana. I'm not sure. I'm actually thinking maybe short forward, which is really unusual for me. Um, but I really like that two ply that's the short forward two ply. Um, it's got a really nice look to it. And that would really kind of um, uh, bounce, like it would really spring up nicely. And 
it, the loft to it would be really nice. It would be very consistent. Um, I really like that. So I'm, I might actually do it short forward, which it, like I said, is really unusual. I'm glad that, that was helpful, um, Charlotte. Thank you. And if you guys have any other questions, um, don't hesitate to pop them in and ask. So um, let's pivot for a moment. My default spinning method is continuous back. So um, three or four drafts back with three or four treadles. Fourth one going onto the wheel. That's why, um, like if you think about it, that was I was spinning that on 12 to one. So if I spun about, like it was probably about 17 inches from the orifice of the wheel um, to the time that I wound it on. So if you think about that, and I was spinning at 12 to one over about, let's just round and say 15 inches, that's 180 twists over that whole length of yarn. Whereas if you're putting in 15 divided by about 1.5 inches times 12, um, you're putting in quite a bit more twist when you're spinning the short forward way. Um, you're not doubling it by any stretch, but you're putting in a little bit more twist and um, um, You can see how the higher ratios when you don't treadle very quickly like if I had put six treadles in over 15 inches um, That would be pretty different compared to um, Compared to um, you know, four treadles, for example. I'm just trying to do the math in my head. I'm gonna get a calculator out. So if you have 20 inches and you have 12 treadles, and you, sorry, you 12 and you, so 48 treadle, 48 twists in that 20 inches of yarn, um, you've got 48 twists in that 40, in that, in that 12 inches of yarn. Whereas if you're doing one treadle per inch and a half, You've got 12 treadles going into an inch and a half of yarn. So hang on, 20. So 13. Yeah, so 160. So um, 160 twists per that same length of yarn versus I think I said 120 or 140 for the for the continuous back. That's quite a big difference in twist, in the amount of twist. So I'll try to remember to upload some of that um, later today and put the math in for you guys in the in the Patreon post for today for for the uh, the show notes. I'll put it in the live the live chat so that you guys will know where to find it um, when you're watching this later and you come back to to this conversation. I'll throw it into the section that says spinning on the wheel um, with some of the some of the maths and why the short forward has so much more twist in it than the continuous back. And hopefully that'll be helpful for those of you who are math people. All right, let's go into community inspiration. Um, we have Spindle Spun Summer starting on June 20th, which we had talked about earlier. So um, definitely think about uh, participating in that. The Spindle Spun Summer thread um, on Ravelry, if you are a Ravelry user, is in the live chat. And then the um, channel to use on the Slack channel is hashtag Spindle Spun Summer. Um, I get confused between short backwards and continuous back. No, short forward, Zan. So, oh, short backward versus continuous back. Sh short back is this, where you draft, you, sorry, sorry, you pinch, draft back, on. Okay, so pinch, draft back, smooth, and on. That's short backward. Continuous back is pinch, draft back, smooth. Pinch, draft back, smooth. Pinch, draft back, smooth, and on. Okay, it doesn't matter how many times you go with continuous back, but short back often pivots to continuous back. Does that make sense? So while you're drafting back and you're doing that, you've got all that twist building up. So if you're a really super fast treadler, 
It's a great way of dissipating twist. But if you're like me and you're a slow treadler, you don't get a lot of twist building up. So you need higher ratios to compensate. Um, smoothing makes a huge difference. She ended up getting more of a woolen style sample when compared to the standard short forward given a, give it, giving a worse style. Yes, you're absolutely right, uh, Carissa. And like Becca says, it's because I smoothed. I was smoothing. If you, if you don't, even though, um, so as I was, so for that short forward sample, I was smoothing quite um, quite firmly for the continuous back. I don't tend to smooth very very hard um, I tend to just smooth very very gently and because it's my default and also you just don't have as much twist Holding those fibers in and holding them tightly together. So hopefully that helps um, It's funny Zan because uh, so does Katrina and Felicia. So when the three of us are sitting next to each other um, I'm like you know, turtle slow and they're like racing a marathon. It's just, it's, it's actually quite hilarious. And we all get like just awesome yarns that we like and that we want to work with. So you definitely end up doing what, what, what works for you for sure. All right. So first June, tell us about your plans for the summer as we approach more opening and more gathering. Uh, the Ravelry thread for the June episode thread is here. I'll throw it in the live chat. And you can also comment here on Ravelry, or sorry, here on YouTube, not in the um, uh, live chat, but in the actual comment section. So breeding color study, Megan shared hers. Um, she, Megan's been working on hers. They're done, my breeding color study yarns. I spun these with color management in mind. I wanted to make a fade over a large object that didn't have just overt striping. And I wanted to spin each skein in a different way as far as color management goes. I divided the fiber into four groups, the darks, the brights, then the morets and reds, and the grays and the reds. The darks I stripped into very small strips and spun random for an overall black yarn with little pops of color. I love that yarn. It is a two-ply woolen spun soft twist. The morets I put through the drum carter with a little black added to it to give it a dark a darker depth of tone this made a lovely overall fall heathery tone and i love it the grays i stripped into small strips and spun randomly for a higher contrast marl with the darks that's the one on the far side on the top there so the second one in here um, there are also two ply lower twist woolen spun singles and the brights i stripped into very small strips and then spun singles i slightly I slightly felted the singles in finishing by hand and I want to com combine these into a large fade with the addition of two commercial yarns from my stash. I knit up a sample and I love it. It was really fun to think primarily about color management and how to get the different effects I wanted for this project. Over dyed colored fibers are always my favorite so these were really fun to spin. Now on to the knitting. I love these yarns. What I actually love is how different they all are. And when you look at them, you know, initially you sort of think they don't even, like they weren't even from the same uh, braid of fiber. And she's been able to create such a different, four such different yarns. Good to see you. Thank you for being here, Sarah. Hopefully we'll see you next week. Um, This is from Maria for uh, Group B's 51 yarn spin along. We haven't done one of these for a while. I think Group B is, um, they're just, they're going to be finishing up in December of this year. So we're six months, you guys, six months, Group B, six months, you guys can do it. Um, so this is Maria. She shared for May, I did the flicking, uh, I did flicking of Finn U locks and spun first with short forward draw from butt to tip of the locks. I have a teal ribbon on this skein, so that's the one on the far side. The other skein is spun starting at the tips end of the lock. So this is tips to butts and back, back again. Maybe the spinning from the butt end was smoother, but not much difference. The skein feels the same and both have nice luster. I love the color, Maria. I may try to spin more of this kind of yarn, at least front with the longest locks. Somehow it felt quick and I have a good amount of this fleece. Beautiful, I love that color. I know I already said that. So for spindle spun summer, people are still uh, clearing off their spindles and getting ready to go. So this is from Mars. She's got all these bits and pieces on all of her spindles. It's so much fun to see. I am using my usual organization method for clearing my spindles. Take it all out and see what's what. 
Some of these spindles were purchased from different Etsy sellers as part of my testing for starter spindles when I was teaching beginners. Some are my precious tools. Classy Squid is a favorite. I can see from this pile that I have mostly been using my spindles for sampling and for small amounts of leftovers from plying on my wheel. I will clear these as, to, as a lead up toward our spindle along. Maybe there's a scrappy knit or a crochet project in my future. I think that'd be really fun, especially with that blue in there and you supply it all together and see what you end up with. Really fun, thank you for sharing. This one's from Christine. I love this spindle, isn't it beautiful? Will have to be a spindle spun winter for me as we're now officially in winter season. Perfect time for digging out my support spindles. And she has mulberry silk on this one. Isn't that gorgeous? Gorgeous spinning, Christine. And I think you're here today because I remember I, I already talked to you. I saw your, saw your name. Beautiful spinning, Christine. This is from Charlotte. She, remember uh, we had shared all of those, uh, all that spinning that she was doing? So she took all of her turtles and uh, a follow-up to an earlier post about joining nine Turkish spindle spun turtles numbered to retain color sequence. Yesterday I used the wheel to chain ply the entire four ounces with no breaks, but was really gentle pulling up new loops when chaining, of course. The braid was so neatly spaced dyed that it begged to be chain plied. 132 yards, nine wraps per inch, Corydell cross from Fiber Obsessions called Spinning the Friends colorway, stripped lengthwise into four snakes, Schneider, Turkish spindle, Turkish glider, 23 grams. Beautiful. I love this uh, photo of her wheel. Isn't that gorgeous? Gorgeous skein. I have to admit, those are totally my colors. I just love those colors so much. Kind of that almost fall-like, late August. Oh, my favorite time of year too, so it always makes me think of that. Gorgeous. And I love your, uh, love your photos there, Charlotte. Beautiful. This is from Sarah. Uh, her, sp my spindle and I went on an adventure today to Hollywood studios. I know this isn't the spindle photos, but just hang on. And here it is. Um, there's a photo of me spinning while waiting in line at the Star Wars Galaxy Edge. Isn't that fantastic? And that's more of the fiber that she was spinning from last week um, when she took the photo of, of, her, of her spindle spinning. Now this pivots to our natural shades along with Sarah's project as well. That's why I combined it all together. I did it, I hand processed and spun up my first fleece. Congratulations, Sarah. This is a gorgeous border lister that is about 14 wraps per inch for a two ply fingering weight yarn. I got just under 1,500 yards and I'm planning to knit the Clara Jane by Hanging Rock Roost. Time to start my gauge swatch. Beautiful. And actually, that's a really cute sweater if you guys haven't seen it. Um, it's really, really, really cute. I'll throw it into the chat. Gorgeous, gorgeous spindles. I have one Turkish spindle from Crafty Jacks and one Russian supported in the mail. Just need to decide on what spin on the Turkish for the summer. Yeah, Carissa, definitely... And then post photos. <clears throat> Let me just scroll down here. I'm getting to the end of my list. Uh, I have to scroll. This is from Ian Lee. I'm not actually sure what your first name is. Um, I got four pounds of Miss Delaney, a CVM Merino cross from Never Say Never Farms in 2017. Spun half of her back then, took a break, and returned to her this year. She's all done. Uh, most are from flicked locks, but the last three bobbins of singles were from hand comb top. Not sure when this will be knit since I now have a golden retriever and her hair sticks to everything. Oh yes, yes it does. And shows up so starkly against dark clothes. It's so true. We still are finding golden retriever hair around our house. It's just brutal. Not as bad as it was, but we're definitely, it's still around. That's for sure. This is from Denise. I just finished up 12 ounces of Shetland roving, four ounces of white and eight ounces gray from Ross Farm. I plan to make the Harriet Hapshaw with a plain garter interior square and perhaps border it with white. Beautiful spinning, Denise, absolutely gorgeous. Um, this is all for our natural shades along that is going on all year. Um, we're just celebrating the natural shades. So it's not, um, 
anything specific. You don't have to do natural shades of wool. You can do natural shades of silk or plant-based fibers, whatever works for you. Um, and so this is just an opportunity for us to celebrate the natural shades. And some people have done natural shades, but then also dyed some of it too, um, which has been really cool. So my natural shades big project was my spark cardigan, um, but I have more planned for the rest of the year. This is from Hannah, beautiful photographs as always. After swatching for a few different patterns, I've decided on the pattern for my, I'm not sure exactly how to say this, Hannah, I'm really sorry, Gras tr tr Tronder, it's a, it's a type of sheep um, spin. I'm gonna throw it in the chat and you guys can tell me how to say it. Uh, it's a three ply sport weight yarn, about a thousand meters. I cast on the Perry Leaves jumper, which I am dying to knit and I don't have the pattern because I don't have the, uh, uh, Shetland Wool Week Annual from 2020, but it was a design by Donna Smith. So I'm hoping that she self publishes it eventually because I'm dying to knit this uh, jumper as well. And I, I threw that into the uh, live chat. Beautiful spinning, uh, Hannah. I love, I love everybody's seeing all this yarn. It's just, oh, it's amazing. This is from Glenda, who's here today. Uh, these socks are made from two natural shades of local Romney. The lighter color was hand comb top that was gifted to me. The darker color, color was pin drafted roving and I spun both fibers short forward with the same amount of twist and expected the yarns to be the same. They are different. The hand comb top, the comb top made a dense yarn. The other yarn is a little softer and more stretchy. I'm not sure if the difference is because of the different preps or a difference in the wool. I had planned to use the darker color for the toes and heels, but because I thought it would be less durable than the lighter color, I decided to change my plan. Beautiful. I like that you've got um, the interest in the leg, you know, the striping, and then you've got a little bit of lace. I just love that, Glenda. Beautiful. What's the question for the June giveaway? I know you said it, no worries, Dorothy. Um, it is what, tell for June, tell us about your plans for the summer as we open up and uh, are starting to be allowed to gather. All right, this next one is from Jenny. This is a big deal. So please outpouring of tons of support for her, you guys. I did it all quote unquote first for me in this process. I completed 1100, 100, 1150 yards of Romney Icelandic two ply in DK weight for my first, for my natural shade sweater spin goal. It was spun short backward after I decided that I needed to relax with the short forward. I spun consistent yarn, woohoo! It's a 50-50 blend from a fleece that I took to a mill to try mill processing. I spun it as a breaking in project on my new Ashford e-spinner. I'm not sure I'll do the processing through the mill again as I missed prepping my own fleece, but it was really nice to be able to spin so much fiber immediately as the mood struck. I'm on cloud nine and want to dance around shouting, I can spin for real, imposter syndrome gone. Thanks for the support and encouragement throughout. Now I get to pick a knitting pattern. Sigh, so content. It's amazing. And I love that there's a photo of their kitty in there too. Amazing. Love those socks. Um, I've got a pack of five natural shades of Shetland that I bought from Jameson and Smith that I think I'm going to spin as part of spindle spun and then knit into a long cowl. Maybe the Betty Moat. Good idea, Christine. Yeah. Almost. Um, the, the phone's ringing. Sorry, you guys. Uh, this is from Linda, which is why I was so glad that she was here today. So this is from Linda. Um, this sweater is the first one I've made since I was a teenager in the 70s. So it feels very much like my first ever sweater. Um, I am very happy with it. I made it from a Corydale cross from Iron Water Ranch that I spun into a three ply. So this is my first zero to hero sweater sp hashtag zero to hero hashtag sweater spin hashtag natural shades along hashtag first sweater. I think I'll go with first sweater and get busy on the other three. Beautiful, and you know what, Linda? It looks amazing on you. Um, I was wondering what the sweater pattern was that you made, and I, I'm not sure if you're here still, but I love it. It almost kind of has a bit of a humbug effect as well. Um, the, the, the yarn, it just looks amazing in the sweater. Just really, really beautiful because of the, the, the different colors in that fleece. Beautiful. I, oh, it's a flax. Of course. I'm looking at the sweater going, wait a second, that's a flax. It looks amazing. Gorgeous, Linda. It's so much fun getting to celebrate everybody in the community. This is from Greta Lynn. Gorgeous photo. 
just outside the Grand Tetons this week and starting my uh, the twig sweater by Junko Okamoto. It's a tight gauge, so it's going to be slower, but the dark fin singles are so soft and I love fins so much. Me too. <laughs> I love it too. <laughs> and actually I'm not familiar with the twig sweater, so I'll have to look that one up. Um, I'm curious about what that one is. We're getting, we're getting long on time here, but I do, I'm just so curious. Um, oh, it's that sweater. Oh, gorgeous. This is it. If you guys haven't seen that, it's a really cool sweater. This is from Nathalie. Her, two, her first two skeins for her tuna sweater spin are done. Skein on the left is finished. The right one is right off the nitty naughty. I took a moment to be in awe of the difference from finishing 10% shrinkage from a hot and cold soak to full the yarn, then a good thwacking and a hang to dry. That's pretty incredible, hey? I know the doorknobs aren't exactly level, but um, you can see that you've lost um, a little bit of yardage there. But it's really cool to see it, like actually in person. It's really neat. Everybody's projects just make me swoon. Absolutely, Charlotte. Kathy said she's processing a fin now. Yeah. All right, we've got a couple more to go because we had a big, big week. I can't believe how prolific you guys are and I didn't even get to like share absolutely everything with you. I wanted to celebrate Barb. She's one of our community members. She's such an amazing part of our community and she was featured in spinoff with her epic jacket um, and the link is in the show notes. I'll throw it into the live chat for you guys. And I just wanted to wish you a huge congratulations, Barb. Really beautifully well done. And uh, your jacket just looks awesome. So congrats, Barb. Isn't that incredible? Hand spun, hand woven, hand sewn. So cool. It was all cabled yarns. I encourage you guys to go and read the article. It's really, really interesting. It's all these cabled yarns that she used. This is from Laura. So this is, this Barb's thing and, and the rest of it is all our sort of spinning sampling and our play um, and celebrating play and celebrating rest in play. So this is from Laura, getting ready to start a gradient spin. This has been one of those ideas that has been eating my brain. I've tried to hold off and do other stuff, but it's finally won the war for my attention. Beautiful, love this. That jacket is amazing. Jacket's amazing, amazing, Barb. Yes, so inspiring. Absolutely, Hannah. This is from Kristen. I love these colors. <laughs> I was very inspired by our community inspiration during this morning's live, and I spent the afternoon tidying up my crafting area and have decided to go ahead and cast on something using hand spun. Woohoo! Sadly, it's not something that I just do. Why do we not use our hand spun? Right? Right, Kristen? Right? I spun these two yarns, both two ply specifically for Botanic by Stephen West, and I'm casting on this weekend and will report back. Yes, please do, because these are my favorite colors. I'm so thankful to be a part of such a talented and inspiring community. Thank you, Kristen. That's very kind. This is from Alex. I watched the long wool module of the breed class on the School of Sweet Georgia and I was so inspired to get out my combs and have a play yesterday. Though not long wool, I made samples of East Frisian and Zwart wools using hand combed fiber. I really like how the East Frisian turned out. I was like, it, I was, it was like a long, springy, light sausage of fiber. I wouldn't say it was cloud-like because it was too substantial and made a lovely two-ply sample. I think that I like those wart balls, but I want to try carding it. I feel like the sun bleached tips are preventing the yarn from being really smooth. Beautiful. Uh, the Frisian sweater that I made um, last summer feels like forever ago now, but um, it's funny, it's interesting because that has actually worn beautifully. Um, and it is pilling in places and I need to get a gleaner. Um, same as this one, this is my um, Romney Romney mohair sweater, um, but uh, with a gleaner, it'll it'll definitely um, wear for a long time. So Frisian's just a great kind of very downy, very bouncy, very sprungy wool. It feels a lot like Clen Forest and um, the badger faced Welsh, Welsh mountain that we were working on yesterday morning for the wool circle. Um, we've been spending a lot of time at the wheel um, sampling and playing and doing like 10 gram samples and the Badger Face Welsh Mountain yesterday morning was really like a lot like that type of fiber, really bouncy and springy. They really do well carded. So I know you were combing here to do comb samples, but, um, but they also do really nicely carded. 
This is from Pernil, our last one for today. I made my first sock yarn. It was supposed to be a crepe yarn. It is not the prettiest yarn I have ever made. Some places it is overspun or over twisted, and some places the opposite. I S spun the first two singles, plied them Z wise, spun the last single Z, and plied S direction. The fiber came as a gradient prepared to spin two three ply skeins as in six little braids. I couldn't help but feel a bit annoyed that somebody else had decided how I should spin my yarn. What if I wanted a two ply or a four ply? I ended up having around 170 yards of yarn, 86 grams. Those little braids didn't weigh the same and I have some leftover singles. I'll save those for later. I hope to have enough for a pair of socks. When the yarn got first got off, off the wheel it was pretty tangled but after a soak and a snap it looked a lot different it's neat um seeing these yarns going from like uh you know crazy you know almost unrefined to being like knittable and i feel you about um stuff when the fiber sort of is prepared to spin and you sort of feel like it's being dictated to you a little bit that can be a bit challenging um and you know it's it's good but it's also sort of like well i maybe i want to do something different so i totally understand that um where did you find the Frisian? i've had a difficult time finding it um, my friend kelsey got it from our local uh fleece sale that happens in june every year it's called the the u affair um and uh i I'm not sure, um, I know that they are available locally, um, but yeah, definitely something that we should look into, Dana, to get some of these some of these interesting wools that are not quite so mainstream. Um, a gleaner is, um, it's, it's for, uh, it's a sweater pill remover. Um, it's a Canadian company, Carissa. Um, there's the link for you. Um, yeah, it's a sweater shaving thingy. Exactly, Laura. Um, I know Glenda has one that's a little travel one that's really super cool. And I've actually often thought about just getting a smaller one. Um, Gleaner, G-L-E-E-N-E-R, is um, their website is here. I sent you an Amazon link, but there's the actual website. Um, I, want to, I wanted to spell it G-L-E-A-N-E-R as well, but it's actually G-L-E-E-N-E-R, like Gleaner. So yeah, so much talent. You guys are absolutely right. Thank you so much for sticking with me today. It's been a very long show. I am going to go and spend the rest of the day with my family. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. Um, let me just have a quick look at our calendar to see what's coming up this week. We've got a maker morning coming up on Thursday. So for those of you who have signed up for that, um, have a watch for that. We will have it at the regular time one last time. So 1030 Pacific Standard Time, Pacific Daylight Time. It's our last one at this time. And, uh, and then we've got our live stream and we've got queries and explorations next, next weekend. So it's on the 19th. So I'll see you guys for that then for those of you who are part of that. So until next time, happy spinning, happy knitting, happy weaving, happy all the things. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I will see you next time. Bye. <music>